the snow should maybe also capture the game for the game. So let's do that. Here we go. Doesn't have any music yet, which is weird, but we have sound effects. I adjusted the audio. I have no idea if it works that way. So we have to um, just see how it goes, I guess. But um, this is the Banner Saga. We're starting it now. Um, I look forward to this. Um, when I play it for the first time, I really enjoy it. I remember it being mm, like the, the storytelling, very interesting um, and with a very, with a very interesting uh, world around it. All right, Richie Mundo, have a good night. Thank you for stopping by earlier. And uh, I hope to see you very soon. So now, if you guys are ready, let's uh, start the Banner Saga before Mademoiselle Danielle turns gray completely. So uh, let's start a new game. And I hope we have some music. We have. Okay. Based on the choices you make, you will occasionally switch between lead characters, witnessing the story unfold from different perspectives. The gods are dead. In their wake, man and giant survived through a tenuous alliance driving black... Mm. Black destroyer is called Dredge deep into the north northern wastes. Now is the era of rose and trade. Life goes on. Only one thing has stopped. The sun. All right, Insidia Scala, thank you for stopping by and for sticking around. Dear, see you soon, I hope. It has been several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, largest of the trade cities on the Val human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. Nice blacker. We have been warned by stranded travelers about brigands on the path through Richhorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. Some fighting already. And there we are in the first fight. Uh, you have arrived just in time. The chieftain and Red and his men are now looking at a tougher fight than they bargained for. Use are to uh, pan around your surroundings, zoom in the yeah. These portraits show the order of initiative taking turns from left to right. Your allies, allies are blue, the enemies is red. It's your turn to act. Movement happens before action. This ring shows your shield banger is 
active. The blue tiles around him show where he can move. Some characters fill more tiles than others. The horned allies are a race of giant called Varro, who take up four tiles each, while humans fill a single tile, while humans fill a single tile. This can have a huge impact on your strategy. Use L to choose a tile, then press X to confirm the move. Move your shield banger here to get him into attack range. <coughs> Hello, Colux! Yes, I am playing the Banner Saga. How are you doing? Okay, so I can move him like this. But, but, up, but, up. Enemy tiles are red and pulls if the enemy is in range. To target an enemy, a nearby enemy, use left stick to select the attack icon, then press X to attack. Do it. You can choose to either attack the enemy's strength or break his armor. The number beneath each icon, 2.5, show the damage you will do to that stat. Strength counts as both health and damage. A loss of 2 strength means you'll now do 2 damage less. If strength falls to 0, the character falls in battle. I'm good, just started playing it to today myself. Oh, really, colleagues? Blacko as well, yeah. Everyone is playing the Banner Saga. I, I will figure it out, Blacko. Everything that I don't remember, I will figure out. Armor blocks strength damage, but can be reduced by a break attack. By breaking armor, you open them up to take more damage in the future. This enemy has only 5 strength remaining. A strength attack will kill him. Bam! Dead. Plus 1 renown. He's down! Each time you make a kill, your renown grows, which is used later to improve your characters. After taking an action, your turn ends. Next up is the enemy. Turns always alternate, even if you are outnumbered. Despite being at full strength, the chieftain will do little damage against your shieldbanger's high armor. Now it's your warhawks. Turn. He appears to be out of range of these enemies, but all characters can use willpower to boost their actions. Willpower is a limited resource, so use it wisely. By moving on gold tiles, a unit can move further than usual. At the cost of one willpower per gold tile. Red pulsing tiles beneath your enemy show how close you, you'll you have to get to be in range. Okay. Standard attacks only affect a single enemy, but your Warhawk has a special ability that gives him a unique advantage. Tempest. Yes. Boink. Double death. That made quick work of the chieftain's bodyguards. When there is only one enemy left, players enter pillage mode. During pillage mode, each character moves in order and there are no more guaranteed turns. Check the initiative to see how the order has changed. Your allies now get to move twice in a row. If a character does not have does not move on his turn, he can rest and regain one Willpower. The chieftain will rest this turn. Looks like the chieftain is in some trouble. Your shield banger won't be able to finish the job with a normal attack, but willpower can be used to boost your damage. Da -da 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 -da. Normal attack. Ding. One willpower. Now nine. And he's dead. 
All right, colleagues, I totally understand. Thank you for stopping by anyway. We got six renown. Like a rabid wolf, that one. How did it come to this? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die, watched the chaos that followed, watched man and var slaughter each other, even before the dreads arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more dreads to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade quite well, I would add, though he denied it to his lust. This sort of wolf doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. I am in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight and I'll gladly send you on your way with double our king's tithe. Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. Okay. So that was the introduction, obviously, to the uh, how the fighting works. In a lot of sense, classical turn-based combat with a few wrinkles here and there. <clears throat> You're approached by a familiar man who walks in step with you as you're leaving the Great Hall. He cuts to the chase. Eirik. Eirik, steward of Strand. I manage the governor's business. Uben, isn't it? It is. Uh, I'm just here for the tithe. Uh, it is. The governor tells me you'll be giving us a hand. Seems a bit chaotic around here, I reckon. Uh, what did you have in mind? Skull things that you didn't hack up in the Great Hall scattered after you took out the chieftain. The governor just wants to make sure they stay down. I was hoping you'd join me at the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, I know who can tell us. Yeah, the, the art style of this game is, is really good, Blacko. <laughs> My Ubin is already friendlier than yours. Yeah, you can uh, influence, obviously, how they act and how the character is supposed to be. So, in those cities, you usually have multiple places of interest that you can check out. Uh, here in the top, you can see um, what your group consists of. More about that later. So uh, currently we only have uh, 32 Yals. We have 100 gold um, and 6 renown. If we... So uh, 100 gold, it's supplies. So we um, passed 0 days since we're right at the beginning. And now we can go over here. Let me handle this. You meander through rows of open-faced houses and eroded stalls. Colored canvases flap on a briny current. One man in particular branches as you approach. Hat! I'm not in the mood today. For... for what? Talking to an idiot! The Skullfing's chieftain bled out about an hour ago, Hat. So, when you tell me that... Uh, when you tell me what red... What red anus the rest of them crawled back into, nobody's going to try to kill you this time. Ah, I don't talk to... They don't talk to me. I do need some help here. Hat. I had a chan change of heart. I hope you do give us a hard time. Hat sweats visibly, fumbling with some dirty trinkets on his table. Ah, wait. Just buy one of these. If everyone thinks I'm getting worked over every week, how am I supposed to do no much? Just a little food money, eh? Let's pay him. You toss a, silver, a sliver of silver on the table. Both men look at you with surprise. Head gestures meekly to a variety of junk from his stall. Ah, take whatever you like. Only thing I'd uh, like is the name of a place. 
No man up by the east wall. But that was a month ago, last I know. Hats skulks away with a wave of Arik's hand, gathering things from his hovel. Disappearing for a while until his this blows over, you figure. Your bodyguard steps forward. Are we done here? Go off. Were you wearing green back at the Great Hall? No. Just bought them while you were walking around. What? You look like a frog. Ah, uh, no reason. Gunnolf goes off to look at more stalls. Alright, that man of yours seemed unreliable at best. A blind dog wouldn't trust Hat, but he used to be scalping. If they are licking their wounds, they've probably gone to old haunts, not new ones. Nobleman is a meat hall? Best I can tell, the name's ironic. Listen, I know a guy who would love to put up a few of these skulls in the ground. I'm going to find him. I'll meet you there. Shouldn't we have an approach of some sort? Where's this place again? Okay, shouldn't we have a, an approach of some sort? What a luxury. Come on, you've already mopped up worse today. Let's make sure the governor remembers his promise. Double the usual tithe. I'll remind him. So, in these dialogues, um, how you act in these dialogues and what um, decisions you, you make uh, will have an impact on how the story goes. And as you play through the game, um, there are also random events that pop up and all that changes your experience of the playthrough. So, um, you can play through the game multiple times and have a fairly different experience. And that sounds very, very classic role play. You arrive in front of what must be noblemen. A few minutes later, Eirik appears with the weather-beaten men introduced as Valgard. I'll point them out, Eirik says over his shoulder. Ready? Let's get over with it. Uh, you are walking through the front door. Yeah, you're walking through the front door. Yeah, the, the results and decision can have a butterfly effect, effect for sure. Yeah. We're into the meat house. I'll be surprised if I can stand up uh, straight right now. Okay, here we go. Valgat boots the front door open so hard it won't close again without repair. As you enter the hall, Eirik is already at the head of the a table, his axe drawn. Wide-eyed, drunken, scalping, scramble to find their own weapons, turning tables and meat steins in the process so um obviously the, this is pretty straightforward and uh, the very beginning but um usually there are often times where you can avoid fights and have still a positive outcome sometimes you have to fight so it and sometimes you have to decide if it's really smart to fight and is it worth the risk that i remember about the game and the combat can be pretty tricky. Um, it's not easy. I remember that. Okay. So that is our layout. I can't, I don't think I can't, yeah, I can't set the starting places differently right now. So, we have Valgard, um, not much, okay, shield ball, where's this, stone ball, stone ball blocks damage to strength and armor for one round, pretty good, move. We could rest. I'm not sure how far they would be able to move. Hmm. Actually, might rest here with them. I just see. 
how close they get. Eirik, rally, rally, gives willpower to allies at any range. That is pretty good. Uh, willpower is pretty important because, uh, as we learned in the tutorial, it can both affect your um, your range on where to walk, but also uh, how much damage you do. So, pretty important stat. Let's rest as well. See what they will do. Let's move forward. Our shield banger. Gunulf, our bodyguard. Okay. So they now have a shield wall. Um, I will end it there. Okay, he used willpower to move forward and attack my armor. Mm. I could attack his armor so we do more damage later. This time I will actually just do straight damage. Okay, let's do... what is no ability? Okay, that is always good if, when they have no ability. Um, yeah. Let's poke him! And the shield means, I think, that they have uh, extra defense. Um... Gunnel Thack, I don't think, no. Okay, two damage. Now, we could kill that, that guy. Probably should, but then I will block the path for our other wall. So let's attack this guy. Maybe let's do some shield damage there. Okay. He used his special attack. So he has four health left. We can take care of him. He's gone. Okay, now we have two peeps here. Could just kill him or attack him. Let's kill him. Just straight up poking him to death. Okay, more shield down. Let's move here and use our whirlwind. Bam! There we go. Can five damage, six damage, then he is dead. <clears throat> okay, taking some shield damage. Um, get rid of that one. Okay, we're taking some hits here, which is not good. Let me manage to use it because Gunnolf is slow and has low armor. Tempest is really hard to set up. Yeah, <clears throat> but if you can, it's very powerful. Let's do some good damage there. Hmm. Unfortunate. 
Crush him. Probably exploded. Okay, got that down. And that should take care of him. Bam! Nobody died. Promotions. Gunulf. Ten renown. Uh, nine renown. Nine! <clears throat> There they are. Gods be damned. I've got to go wash off this blood. Eric is looking out the hall's window onto the bay. A fleet of longship approach with sails of bold reds and blues. One banner I know well, Vognir. Next for Jarl Kingship, Val Kingship last we spoke. The other flag looks important. Yeah, important guess. See what I deal with all day long? Uh, th things make a little more sense. You hoped I'd have a stake in saying everything's fine here when the royal guests arrived. Not me, the governor. Now I have to make sure there are no rotting bodies or pools of entrails still in the great hall before they come by. Can I ask one more favor? What is it? If you happen to stall our guests down on the docks, I wouldn't object. Mm, maybe I will. Eric and Valgard hustle from the meat house. To, to his credit, Eric tosses the barkeep a, pair, a spar of silver for the mess. You give an ap ap apologetic shrug and go to the go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks. Okay. So now we can go down to the docks. Vognir, a familiar Val steps onto the docks. In your mind, you recall a much younger version tramping the halls of Grofheim, abundant in purpose. Gods, Uben, you are looking ancient. Comes with being old, and if uh, there is Vognir, there must be Hakon. Must there? Still bleeding tributes from the poor and stupid old yucks. At what age do you lose a sense of shame? Jorunde demands it. I'll take that over lingering to death in Grofheim. Speaking of, I had no sense that you were so far from home. Just return from Arborang, in fact. And glad for it. Harker motions to the other ships in the bay. Sailed still fluttering. Golden wolf had emblazoned on red. The king of man was someone on his behalf. The king's the king's whelp. The king's son Luden. Don't you know, Scrivener? We visit the capital, he visit ours. It's how you make alliances these days. It's a miserable waste of time. Yes, Harkon. I'd almost forgotten. It's a good thing you're around, Harkon. Then you're going to grow farm? I have the distinct feeling I've finished my business in Strand and was heading there myself. We should caravan. We should. Give it a day. Better circumstances, I'd drink a week away, but uh, let's just be done. Find me tomorrow at the gates. What he's trying to say is the prince is a delight to be hoped. Where's Mogur? Harkon. Have him find a place to put up the warriors. I'm heading up to meet the governor. Hosts of giants depart in his way. You recognize a few. Others are strangers to you. Guess I'm off to find Mogur. See you in the morning, Scrivener. I'll be along. The young prince of man ambles from his ship. He brushes off his tunic, scanning the beach with low eyelids. Ludin looks for all the world, the sorts of boy who grew up pulling the legs from spiders. The long road back to Grofheim should be more interesting than most years, you think. Great. Baroness suddenly settles in, and you chuckle to yourself about what an odd day it has been. One of the governor's men at the Great Hall could find you a place to sleep. 
On the other hand, if you're going to join Vogni's caravan tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink with Hakon, or introduce yourself to the prince they spoke so highly of. Uh, let's talk to Hakon. Scrivener! You find Hakon in the meat house, surrounded by other Val. Strand is no stranger to Val, but rarely sees this many. Hakon waves you over. Went straight for a flagon. Wogan is the one who agreed to pass up a drink. I wasn't invited to the governor's hall anyway. You already missed the massacre. Every year I make the rounds collecting taxes. Every year it's the human settlements that give me trouble. No surprise. What's this time? Alright, Blacko. When I got here, the great hall was already full of bodies. We added a few more. Huh, humans. I guess if only... I guess if I only lived as long as a fox fart, as a yox fart, I might be desperate to make something of myself too. Thank you, Blacko. All right, look away. It's not too late to start trying, Hakon. Hakon lets slip a low chuckle. Any Val could recount his deeds, known as he is for cutting a swath through Dredge at Vogtia's side and the second ward regularly since then <laughs> if i only lived as long as a fox fart yeah exactly fits oh so i miss misspeak and everyone comes back all of the sudden credible just pointing fingers here <laughs> down here i'm glorified bodyguard you might have a point just another reason to get back to Groveheim. Soon enough, I imagine. You drink until the meat house becomes overbearing, then step back into the cool air outside. Uh, let's talk to this Luden guy. Is this the right place? You find the prince at an inn. Guards blanket the building, including a sharp-eyed Val who must be working for Luden. A woman in red eventually waves you over and stands nearby, arms crossed. Greetings. Prince Luden. Ha! Huh. Yes! You're with Wagner. I don't remember you. Not exactly. I've known Wagner a long time. I'll be joining you back to Groveheim with my guards. Luden looks up for the first time. The woman doesn't react. Why? I work for the king. Carrying tithes to the capital. We cross by chance. Oh! A tax collector! Fine company! What do you want? Just introduce myself. I hope to learn more about you. I have a habit of recording history. I thought we might talk about your visit. It's a vile historian? <laughs> Don't you already know? Your king and mine both have been practically trumpeting throughout the cities. I've been on the road a while, I'm afraid. Boone takes a deep sigh. Whether tired of ungracious, you aren't whether tired or ungracious, you are uncertain. Maybe both. A formality, mostly. Wagner came to our capital in Arberang, and now we go to the Wild's capital in Groveheim to cement this grand alliance for the next age of men in Val. You sound unconvinced. There's no need for it, and it's damn cold up here. You get the sense he's struggling not to complain outright. You take the opportunity to excuse yourself. Spot, little brat. Let's go to the Great Hall. Minus one supplies. At dawn, you're awoken by a delivery of goods. At least you think it's dawn. At least you think it's dawn. Damn hard to tell with the sun that never moves. The governor's crest adorns the supply leathers. All there, just as promised, to your mild surprise. You wonder if Eirek had anything to do with that. Plus 20 renown. Your guards take the treasure wagon down to the gates. Vognir is already here. A while later, Luden and his men appear groggy and dishelved. Kill him! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow, slow down there. Mogur steps forward. Vognir's quartermaster. If you recall correctly, in charge of his unwieldy entourage of warriors. You know him only in passing. He asks if you're ready to depart. We are ready. 
You follow Mulgrew and join the others. Usually the smaller doors set into the gates would be enough to enter or leave the city, but the town guards have been told to push them open entirely. The mutter th they mutter things under their breath that are best not heard. Perhaps the governor expected you to draw a crowd, but there's nothing of this sort. Just frustrated, tired people. It summarizes Strand well as a whole, you think. So now we go on our journey. And on the top you can see how time passes, and now along the way we will um, encounter certain um, events, and also when whenever a day is gone, morale sl slowly goes down, we lose a little bit of supplies, so we have to manage that as we go on. Okay, so the sun stays in the same place, meaning the earth stops spinning, meaning the other side of the world is in complete darkness and cold and desolate. The sun is always out, but the snow never melts. Well, it's a cold sun, maybe. I'm I'm not uh I don't remember much about the lore about it. So we might figure out more about that than yeah. But it it raises a good point. The caravan stops for a day. A gift, says Morgan, cracking open meat cast. From our gracious friend, the governor of Strand. Hours pass with a ro raucous laughter as the meat is passed through camp. Drink a little, drink a lot, toast to Wagner. Um Toast to Wagner. You call bullshit on that. Okay. You raise your drink, toasting the alliance between men and Val. The others join in. Luden's expression is like a stone maw, but the others laugh at your exaggeration. Eventually, you sit down beside Wagner. Uh, chat with him. Thanks for the speech. Thanks for the speech. Looks like you didn't, want, didn't have to miss out after all. Thanks to Mogur. I thought the damn governor would never shut up. Did he give you the history of his entire family? He tried. Then he asked me to clean up his mess. For your benefit, turns out. Huh. I'd have given the job to you, too. Gods, there's no joy in politics. Speaking of, what happened after this business with Ludin? Hopefully the boy goes back to Arboran on his own. And I can take out some frustration on dread and something. Sight is out like Hakan. You don't like the life of a diplomat. You, li you like his flowing locks? Yeah, they, they are glorious, right? Ha! Don't you miss the fight, Ubin. You down your meat instead of replying. Wagner slouches and shakes his head. There's no great joy in killing Dredge, but this. Pretty sure this nonsense is some scheme between the two kings to force some kind of lineage. Used to be warriors would follow you for what you'd done. Isn't that why they follow you now? Is it? Or is it because I'm the next in line? These lines are getting muddy, old wall. They've always been muddy, Bognir. Bognir stares into the campfire, lost in thought. You leave him to it. You rise groggily, the campsite a casualty of merriment. Mogur is already kicking warriors awake when you spot Ludin stalking your direction. He sidesteps sleeping bodies. Better wake up, you nudge Wagner. You're needed. Okay. Little prick wants something. Ah, it's Ludin. Always a pleasure. Look well rested. Fognir releases a caged yawn and receives a hard-eyed stare in return. How long to grow fine? Ha! We're only two days out of strand, you know. Come, I'll show you on the map. This is the map of the world. You can explore by uh, panning with R, zooming in and out. It's R2. So, this is the world we're living in. Basically living on an island. Continent-ish. Hard to say. Kind of looks like the German state I grew up in. A little bit. But there's that. 
The location of a caravan is indicated by Ubin's icon. And we can hover over these. The world map is covered with many locations and holds much lore. You can explore the map at any time, selecting locations with R1. Karlsvat! Everyone remembers that the lake in the midst of the Red River is the final resting place of Karl, a key figure in the First Great War, integral to ending the strife between men and Baal. But what most forget is exactly how he ended up at the bottom of the lake. So we can click through here. Um, there's a lot to investigate, won't do, ev do everything, but um, probably makes sense to check out the places we meet. Strand. As close as anything comes to a bastion of racial tolerance, both men and Val compete to scratch out living in this, the biggest trade city along the west coast. Many people still believe the god Dangle still watches over it, granting good fortune. So then we have there's the Karls Fjord, and then this is the road we're at. The Wandering Road. At the end of the First Great War, the Val had more to contend with than, with than mankind to the south. Above the Bratabrak peaks, the lands crawled with furious war-minded dredge. The first Val King, Einar, led the entire Val race across the snowy fields of the Wandering Road, sweeping away dredge as they went, before forming the first Val Kingdom at Einartoft. So, and then we hear her, we have the last gate. The crossing of the small bridge leading from Vedelfell onto the Wandering Road marked a small but significant moment in which the Val truly separated itself from humanity in search of their own lands. Okay, I think that's it for now. We head north to the, uh, we head north than east, past the forts. Grofheim's far from Strand, going to be a long march. You should have drank last night, Luden. Why not take the ships to Skirmenstead? What's the point of marching? The Silverstone Bay is called that for a reason. It stays covered in the ice all year. It would tear up the longships. Too bad, though. We could have shown you all the wonders of Skirmenstead. A house sunk in cities crawling with dredge prints. Dredge? And glaciers. You like glaciers? Duden exhales through the nose, a poor disguise for his contempt. He turns and bats aside the ten flaps as he goes barking at his company in the distance. Don't poke the anthill, Wagner. He seems no happier to be here than you. Spend a few days with the boy, old friend. You'll be looking for a tall cliff to hop off to. Luden's got a shorter wick than Harkon. Thanks, Vogner. Let's get moving. Another half day to Vatterfall, if we're lucky. All the wonders. Camp. Camp is where you manage your caravan. During ca travel, you can enter camp at any time by tapping the camp uh, button on the travel hut. While at camp or in towns, you can upgrade your allies or equip items in the hero's tent. You can pass time by using rest tent. Resting will improve the caravan's morale. The high morale will reduce casualties of war and affect your willpower in combat. Each passing day will use supplies, so only rest when necessary. The training camp tent will allow you to safely try out any characters in a mock battle. Tap leave at the bottom of the campsite when you're ready to go back on the road. So there we have training. Heroes. Let's let's check out the heroes tent. So, we can now select these people, um, abilities, um, la um, oh, we have two different abilities, I guess. 
I'm not quite sure how it worked. Oh, we can't. I can't upgrade him. Because we, you see at the bottom the, the little um, skull. That means he has to kill two enemies in order to be able to level up. Gunnel, for example, he killed three out of, out of two. So we can upgrade him. Which costs us five renown, and then we can spend it on his abilities. Mm. Exertion is the amount of willpower you can use at any given time. So right now he can't use any. Hunker down. I think I will go with him further into defense for now. Because he already does a lot of damage. Then we have Harkon, Luden, okay, couldn't do anything with them. And here I can switch them around in which order I want them to move. So do it like this. So there's that. Could do training, could do rest, but we don't need that right now. So just leave and continue. And this is how most of the game would look like. We will the travel th through the world. And wind sweeps in from the bay. They tend livestock, but most are just man driven from strand with nowhere else to go. Why else would anyone stay? We won't stop long. By Harderbog. That's a lot of Val for some missing cattle. Uh, what? A couple of days back, sent word to Strand about the cattle. Didn't expect an army. He looks pleased with himself until it sinks in that you aren't here on his behalf. Where have your cattle gone? Wouldn't know. My boy's seen men up the hills carrying them away. Don't know many men who can hoist a whole cow by himself. Scarfing's out here, maybe? Could they have Val working for them? Not from what the governor told me, I'm going to take a look around and get camp set up. The peasant spits, his eyes anxiously darting about as the Karen sets up tents. Well, we'll be here no more than a day. There's silver for any food you've got. For hundreds of Val, are you serious? What, what are you willing, whatever you're willing to sell. Yeah, just, just just grab the cow under your arm and then you carry it home. You th you think, you're thinking of squatting? There's not room for a couple of hunters here. Forget hundreds of... Shut up! Hear that? Where's Ludin? It's faint. Sounds like fighting and something else. Harkon takes off at a run. What is that idiot doing? Strong boys. Yes. Oh boy. It's Ludin. And then I can move there. Actually didn't want that, but okay. Spearman can attack diagonally and up to two tiles away. It was pretty cool. Yep, if they have high armor. Deflect. Takes two of damage. Yes. Down he goes. Great. What an idiot. Can't say that I'm very sorry for him. Okay. Uh, let's do a thing. Sundering impact. 100% uh, to hit. Strength damage plus one break. To, one break to target. Okay. Obviously, could do that. Let's uh, damage the. All right, my Bazaar and y'all, see you around. 
Let's damage the armor a bit so we can do some damage. Thank you! Four damage. Ooh, he does also four damage. What is his about bringing the pain? Break damage to target. Let's do that. Okay. Not super strong. Um. Do five damage on him. Seven damage. Boom. There we go. Get rid of this one. This willpower star I can then give to anyone I want. Okay, now he's stuck there. Could attack him. Mm. Can I move? Oh, that will hit Harkon as well, though. It was stupid. Not a good move on my side. God damn it. Okay, some damage to the armor. Okay, two damage taken. Now if I do it here, would I hit him? No. Okay, that would hit both of these. Good. Okay, only armor damage. That's good. Armor damage, okay. That's fine. Let's use Tempest again. Still in a good position. Killed them both. Nice work. Victory. Promotion for Gunnolf. That worked out very well. Trying to get yourself killed, Luden? Why does this Harkon guy look like the Viking version of Dr. Disrespect? What are you doing? I was trying to find a... Uh, trying to get it shot in between the plates. Never seen a dredge before, boy. Kind of idiot break their armor first. Where did they come from? We didn't even see them. They were just there. Harker goes to where Vognir lies face down. The future Valking lies motionless, aside from a spreading pool of blood. Vognir is dead. Chapter 2 Cut with keen edged sword. So the future king of the Val was just killed by the dredge. 
So we uh, now move to the other side of the map. Where did that thing come from? Shh, stay close. I think it saw us. Okay. Right into the another fight. I won't happen before the bell. Select the unit. Okay. Mark prey. <clears throat> Let's just rest. Let, him, let it get closer. So this is Rook and Alette. Both. Okay, range attack, not quite. Uh, she has threat needle. Hits all enemies between the archer and the target. <clears throat> Can also be very useful. Let's rest another round. Okay. Now let's go forward with Rook. Mark the dredge. Okay, take some damage. Can I attack from here? Not quite, but... Okay, here I should... Yeah, here I'm able to attack the guy. Let's do first some... Armor damage. Oi! Okay. Okay, rookie, rookie, rook. Oh no, now he comes close. That's not good. That I didn't want. Let's go here. So we have the attack from the distance. He follows her, that's not good. Stop that. Let's use one willpower. And that is enough. Bam, down he goes. Oof. Victory! Our renown grows. Was that a dredge? Let looks calm, but you can tell her heart is about to beat right off her, out of her chest. It was. Let me see. Are you hurt? No. I'm f I'll be fine. When the dredge attacked your cart and the yoks bolted, it spilled most of your supplies. You can see more dark figures moving through trees when you glance that direction. All that food. All that food. That's the last we're going to get before winter. Do we... What do we do? Don't run. Let me think. Get the supplies. Let's get back to Skogur. If we hurry, we can gather them before more dredge appear. Do you think you can handle more of them? Do you think you can handle more of them? No. That... I... I mean, we're already lucky to be alive. I know. It's okay. Let's get back to Skogur. Oh, nice try. Supplies. Supplies represent food and other goods uh, used to keep everyone alive on the road. When supplies are gone, people will start to die of starvation. The more people are in the caravan, the faster supplies will diminish. You can see how many days of supplies you have left on the travel display at the top of the screen. Most towns will have supplies to sell, as well as a few items.
expected to see the dredge with my own eyes. What happened in the north? Already we see more between the trees as we approach our home, and Alette grips my hand tight. We must find Ivor. Ivor! The enormous violin question towers over the men in the training field. He squints as you approach. Already back, Hardmaster? Thought you'd be tomorrow. Dredge! Everywhere! Dredge! How did they get through Greyhorn? Must have broken through the fort. The fighters nearby have stopped sparring. They gather around you. Damn it! They'll be there here soon if they're not already. He screams. From the outskirts, people are running towards the Great Hall. I returns to one of the older boys in his group of fighters. Igil, take a lad to the Great Hall. Tell the chieftain what's happening. The rest of you gather up as many men, as many people as you can. Come on, Annette! No, wait. I, I want to help. Let them fight. Why not invite some goats to join us too? You're asking for dead kids. I won't let anything happen to her. I have to deal with it sooner or later, Ivor. What now? <sighs> Egil, keep up, keep your shield up. We just hold them off until everyone's inside. Then we figure out what to do next. More shouts draw your attention to some house atop a nearby hill. Okay, we only have the house to select, so let's do it. Sure enough, Dredge are gathering in numbers. You hear misplaced laughter nearby. P past the pile of corpses, a man is single-handedly holding back four Dredge with a battered spear. Behind you, Trickby! shouts Ivor, who shoots you a dour look. If Trickby is known for being a madman, at least he's the sort who can hold a spear in the right direction. He smiles a mile wide when he realizes you're going to have to fight your way out of this. Hey, we have a madman! Great. Yes. Okay. What kind of item does he have? A Let's bracelet. Trickfee's necklace. Plus ten crit chance. Okay. Uh, strength, willpower. Let's give it to a Let first. Can I level her up? He only has one kill, obviously. Okay. Not much we can do, but I remember I like having him there. Yeah, let's do it this way. Ready for battle. Let's see how we do. If we can keep everyone alive. I remember that along the way people can die or can get injured so the outcome of the battle you don't have to win every battle but it has definitely an effect if you lose them um, some battles story battles that you just have to redo i think but others um it just has then a negative effect okay let's see uh the big boy is over there so i think what i will do we will focus on the small guys first Let's put a lad with her distance there. Mm. He will move forward soon. Let's put Trickly there. And let me do it like this. Okay. Uh, that will do some good damage. Um, yeah. Okay, big boy is walking. Now. Okay. 
and he took some willpower. Interesting. Let's gang up on him first. They will come all closer. Ooh, he attacks with... That I didn't expect. Mm. Let's mark him. Nice! Don't know what that was, but... Um, let's move her here. He's gone. Ooh, that took away a lot of armor. That's not good. Battering ram. I think we can do the same. Go away, fiend. Just kill him. Okay, use extra willpower. Does some damage. Mm. Let's walk over here. Stone wall. Oh, that was that he can't. Doesn't take as much damage. So let's do some shield damage there. They focus all on the vowel. That's not good. All oh, right, now I remember that he has uh, range attacks as well. Okay. Nice shot. Ooh, that's not good. Oh, he has one health. Yeah, let's, let's keep him away there. No. And turn. Okay. Let's stand on his way and get rid of this guy first. Oof. Some armor damage. Now let's move away. Rook as well. Can do some damage from afar. Alette can go here. Still not much damage that we can do. Let's focus further on his armor. Uh, yeah, you will just chill there for now. Now we're talking. Impale. Not like one tile target bleeds. One strength per... That sounds good. Ooh, critical! Just as and he's dead! Trick we! That's some damage! The madman. Six renown. Difficulty. Karma can be unforgiving. Don't hesitate to change the difficulty of battle if it leaves you frustrated or you find yourself needing a tougher challenge. Use the option menu to change difficulty. Don't worry, you can change the difficulty at any time and it has no effect on the story or choices you make. I'm playing on the normal difficulty, by the way, so there's that. You take stock of your handiwork. Um, I think I'll stick with you lads, says Trickby, unless you've got an, uh, got other ideas. I have a grand something non-committal. A black horde is forming at the tree line. Enough, enough of this, says Ivor, glancing over the shoulder. We're going back, then adds Rook. I'm doing one more check of the houses around here, see if you can find anyone. Okay. 
As you turn to your head back, a colossus appears and around the side of the house. It suddenly looms over a lead, its face an expressionless stony mask, more terrifying than any roar it may have produced. Time seems to slow as it pulls back its enormous mace. Uh, shout at Alette. You scream Alette's name. She snaps to attention, confused, but does not dive out of harm's way as you had imagined in your head. Suddenly, Egil uh, is between the dredge and Alette. His shield above him, the black stone maze falls. Egil's shield crumbles and so does the boy beneath it. A moment later, Ivor is there. His sword runs through the neck of the dredge. He's gone, says Ivor, looking over the boy's shattered skull. Alette gasps, her hand to, to over mine. Checking the other houses, I remarks. See if you can find anyone and then meet me at the Great Hall. Okay, there's a market. I could buy some supplies. Let's do that, because I remember that having a lot of supplies is super important. And then I could... I could buy a bales plus uh, two will. That I could buy, I think. Or a leather flask, one will per rest. Let's take this. Or I, I'll save it, I'll save it. You find anyone? A few. Send them inside. Gods, this is bad. About Gil. It was my fault. It was a good fighter for his age, no family. I thought I'd forgotten what it's like facing Dredge. I'm out of practice, Rook. Look, as long as I've known you, you've always wormed your way out of talking about Dredge. This would be the time to start talking. I can tell you they rarely stop for rest. The sooner we leave, the better. They follow us until we're tripping over tired women and children. Then they're, they'll attack. Even after we're wiped out, they come. they keep coming. Trampling corpses in their wake. There's no end to them. How does anyone survive the Great Wars? Ask the Mandras. I wasn't there. But I know you fought your fair share. Yeah, I've killed enough slack for one lifetime. That's why you're going to save us now. Don't lay that on me. Come on, let's get inside. Okay, let's go to the Great Hall. Rook! Thank gods, you made it. The Great Hall is an utter din, filled as it is with dozens of terrified families. Don't stop worrying yet. I haven't. What is the death that's going on? Dredge milling around, ransacking houses? The chieftain's wife finds you pushing through the crowd. Odd life. They must, known, they must know where we are here. Why haven't they attacked? Don't know. I wouldn't expect it to last. I've made some decisions, but tell me straight, what would you both do in my place? I'd have left by now. They're already outside the doors. Not so easy. Done. Rook? Uh, yeah, I trust Ivor on this. The chief and sigh, sighs a deep and heavy breath, slumping. He looks years older. I imagine us fighting back and saving the town, but nonsense. I was right, of course. We can't just wait to be slaughtered. Where do we go? If Dredge are coming down from the north, Frostvelder to the west. It's close and it has walls. I intend to be free of Skogur in one push. Nobody left behind. I wouldn't. If they follow us, we're done. What do you suggest? Let me create a distraction, then go. I'll catch up on the road to Frostvelder. That sounds like suicide, Arthur. Let's do as the chieftain says. I was right. I'll help with the distraction. Let's help with the distraction. The chieftain thinks for a long moment. Didn't ask for advice just to ignore it. Promise you're not throwing away your lies on this. That wasn't part of my plan. However, nope. And then I'm coming with you. That catches you by surprise. The chieftain rubs his, rubs his chin, but doesn't argue. From the training she's given, I'll let you have no doubt she can handle a bow. Fine, I'll get the townspeople ready. Make your move, Ivor. You leave when you're clear. Okay. And that finds you before you have a chance to find her. 
I know what you're doing. You have to let me come with you. Don't leave me, please. I'll be good. Okay, Arlette, just promise to listen. I promise, she says. I will soon find you both. Let's let's go. Remember, we're not trying to fight them all. We're just getting their attention. You step into the crowd in the town courtyard, where you can already see Dredge in every direction. Ivor starts banging his shield and swearing at them. We kill a few, he shouts, and the rest will follow. You steal yourself for a tough fight. Okay. Um... I can level up Trigby. Let's promote him. Oh, I do not have enough. I have four. That's unfortunate. Um, what is the other... What? Oh, no, I didn't buy another. Right, didn't do it. Okay. So, yeah, I think we're ready. Oof, that's an awkward starting position. <laughs> hmm. Since we have three people who are able to do damage from a distance, let's huddle up in a corner. And see where it goes. Mm, actually, for now, let's just rest here. Let them come closer. Okay, that's good. Because now. Rook can go there, then attack this one. Five damage. Just only three damage, okay? has rain of arrows. Uh, target a tile and send an enemy who steps in with a rain of arrows. Oh, okay. Uh, well, there I could attack. That's good. Because that would mean he's dead. Good job, odd life. around here. Can we attack? No. Can we bash? No. Let's just end the turn. Oof. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's do this. Knock him back a little bit. Now, with Rook, we will move around here. Um, do some damage. Get doink. Ooh, they focus on Trigby. That's not good. Ooh, but if I can move here... But I don't know if the special attack hits all units. Uh, probably that means friendly units as well, right? Oh. Mm. 
He's almost dead. He's, he's down, we got the promotion. Finally someone's, someone is attacking the big guy. Uh. Oof. Trickly has to go way there. That's not good. He has three health. Um, but what he could do is using oh impale has only okay but I didn't know hmm. I wanted to use impale but I didn't know that it doesn't have to tiles or that I can attack from two tiles that is what I mean uh, let's go a little bit outside with Rook let's go with him pillage round ah uh, what about our daughter um, let's go here Take the armor. And odd life. We can do some good damage. And we move in with Ivor. To finish it. Nice. Life gets a promotion. Rook gets a promotion. And six renown. Morale improved. You have no problem getting the dredge to follow. Things begin to look dicey, but you're eventually able to lose them in thick woods, where they have difficulty keeping up. You climb to an overlook and wait for the caravan to appear. An hour later, Odd Life is the first to spot them. There! She points to the road. As we rejoin them, you can tell there was trouble. Some people wounded, others missing. A group has gathered at the rear of the caravan. Oddlife walks beside a covered figure in the open wagon. Old fool, she says through clenched teeth. I should have stayed with him. The chieftain's de death hits you like a blow to the gut. Continue on to Frostover in silence. A let's hand from me in your own. So the uh, chieftain is dead. Pausing to catch your breath, you glance backwards to see the cavern stretch out past the point of safety. They're spaced out so far you're unable to see those bringing up the rear. We've got to pull them together, says Ivar. I'd be dan it'll be dangerous to stop until at least the godstone. The path should be just ahead. Gone early stuff for the day. Slow the pace so everyone can catch up. Um, call it an early stop today. You refuse to, uh, to risk the lives of everyone for small gains. A sharp whistle signals the clansmen in front to stop moving forward and start clearing space for camp. Smiles appear on tired faces, even though you didn't push as far from the dredge as you'd like. And we are at camp. Uh, let's check with our heroes since we can level up a little bit. Items, yes. Okay, we can level up Trickly, which I would like. Let's level up his ability to improve his attacks with willpower and the shield breaking uh, effect that I want. Odd life we will promote as well. Thank you. Um, what do I do with her? Yeah, I think just so he, she can use more willpower. I think that's pretty good in the beginning. 
and rook. He will increase his shield breaking ability. Okay. Uh, that's it for now here. And we have to talk to, or we can talk to, Trickvy. <clears throat> Trickvy, guess I better thank you for helping us uh, out back there. Trickvy turns his head, eyes wide as though something was stalking him. Ah, uh, hmm. Nice beard, Rook. But that's not why I'm here. Uh, okay. Why are you here? Fat clansman. What? They eat, eat, eat. Don't know how to kill a thing, Rook. He rolls the R and Rook gratuitously while holding out his spear for you to inspect. Look at this thing. They grow on trees. You can make this from a tree. My advice? Show them how to stick some pigs or stick a rabbit. A bird. You can stick almost anything. Rook. Uh, have you always been this way, Trigby? I've always been tricky. Dumb question, Rook. Look, I hear what they say behind my back. Trickvy's handsome, Trickvy's brave, but you're the right man for this job. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Any more helpful advice? Glad you finally ask. Don't trust the man just because they have faces and use their mouths. A man will look at you right through his helmet and lie. Should I trust you, Trickvy? Come on, Rook. Uh, am I wearing a helmet? That is a good point. I get it. We all got things to do. Me and I was... Me? I was about to go swimming. Uh, at least you're keeping clean. Nobody comes looking for you in a pool of water, you know? Don't let me waste too much time there, okay? Uh, we'll come get you before we leave. I'll see you around. Only if you keep your eyes open, Rook. You can't help but hope there was nothing sinister about that last comment. Okay. Interesting. I think uh, this will be where I ended for today. Hello, Mademoiselle Danielle, you're back. Probably the only person left, but um, uh, I will end it here for today. Um, just wanted to get going with uh, Banner Saga. I think I will continue it maybe on Friday and then do a whole stream on uh, the Banner Saga. Um, probably, I'm not sure if we, we will be able to finish it in one stream. Probably not. Um, but um, on Friday, if if I stream on Friday, it's still not uh, still not sure. I will have to see. But um, maybe on Friday more Banner Saga. Uh, thank you all for joining me today. I had a, a good time with the first tree, and I do enjoy the Banner Saga. It's kind of a chill little uh, story round base RPG, I would say, um, and I enjoy playing it. So we will continue with that as well on Wednesday. Um, I will play Wizard of Legend, uh, another fun little game. Um, it was in the Humble Bundle, and it is a pixel art action RPG-ish with lots of wizarding going on. So looking forward to check that out. That will be interesting as well. And then obviously on Sunday, Giveaway Sunday, with more Yakuza Kiwami 2. Very exciting. Um, before I send you off to someone else, uh, a few thank yous to say. Um, thank you for the host, Asha Bellana, in the beginning. Thank you very much, Wintermorgen, for the resub. Very much appreciated, as always. And the 99 Luftballons. And uh, then Crafty Mod, thank you for the raid. Very much appreciated as well. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful time. And uh, I uh, hope you're doing well. Until next time, uh, with me and more games. Which will probably be Wizard of Legend. So let's see who is on the line. Uh, let's send you over to Elusive Sovereign. He's playing the forest. Elusive Sovereign. Say hi to Sovereign. Give him a follow if you haven't already. Uh, be nice. Spam some pandas or other emails that are at your 